today's video we're going to be covering the latest build we've done on the channel now this is one of i don't know what it's one of but it's one of something but <laughs> fuck So in today's video, we're going to be covering the latest build I've done on the channel. Now, this is rocking the iFly XL5 V4 frame and also the newest Holly Bro stack. Now, we're also actually using Racer Star motors, believe it or not, but this is a premium level Racer Star motor that they have had OEM'd from a proper manufacturer, which is a good thing. So this is a 6S build. If you've missed it, I'll have a link to the build video down below as well as all the components that I've used here. Now we're going to discuss its overall performance, the PID tune out of the box, basically default Betaflight PIDs and how I've tuned it and also share with you my PIDs and the overall experience. So let's get started. Now the first thing we're going to talk about are the motors. These are 2207 Racer Star SICK motors. The SICK is the model. They're the 1888 KV. So they're basically a high KV in the 6S land of quadcopters. And how did they perform? They were actually quite smooth and the throttle to torque range is very predictable and is always there when you need it. Like it just, it just felt so responsive and I could count on it in a tight situation where if I give it throttle that it's actually going to respond more than likely on most of the throttle levels, which is something I really look for, especially when I'm paying big money for high performing motors. However, with these motors, they're slightly less expensive than the premium motors for a couple reasons. One, they are basically premium. That's, yeah, you have to think of it that way. They are actually premium. However, Racer Star gotten oh, so many OEM'd at once and it's their own brand. So they can play around with the prices because they're so big. So this kind of puts it as a really great budget-ish motor, but obviously there's even cheaper. But overall, it's a really great 6S motor currently from my current experience. And not only that it's a great motor, it's also very efficient as well. So this is not a bad motor overall and would be recommended totally fine. If you had this in mind within your budget range, you can get this. You can also get some other motors like the Emax Ecos are great and the iFlight uh, Ecos, like the Ease basically. I've still never tested, but a lot of people speak so highly of. So I guess those would be great also. Now, 
let's move down from the motor. So let's talk about the frame a little bit. Now the frame is pretty interesting because this is the iFly XL V4 and again everything is linked down below. And what I really like about this frame, because I've actually gotten their previous revisions also, is that usually stock beta flight PIDs would work just fine with slight bounce back, but no jitters, no nothing twitches, none of that you know, annoying stuff that's very difficult to tune out sometimes. Just a little bounce back you get on the roll and the P, which I've slightly modified, but I didn't get enough time to tune it for a couple reasons, because I only brought four batteries and I forgot to bring my charger, so I only had four batteries to get some flight footage done before the weather turns into shit again. Out of the box as a beginner build, I would say this is going to be pretty good for you because it's not going to annoy you in terms of the fact that you're going to have to tune the living crap out of it to fly, which you don't, which is something really nice. And that usually comes down to the frame. Obviously, other factors are involved, but more likely it's the frame CG and the overall frame you know, execution. This is a pretty great one to start off with. And not only that, it is actually a great one to keep flying because a lot of people actually fly these for the freestyle builds here. And again, it's a really good frame. Now, let's move down to the stack. So for the ESC, we're using the Hollybro F45 amp. Now, this is a new ESC from Hollybro. It's their budget-ish kind of. It's like it's a low-cost premium ESC. I don't even know how, what, what class I would put this in. Anyways, it's the cheapest premium ESC that has the latest CPUs, basically, microcontroller units, which is an F3, and it performed absolutely spectacular in the air. Now, what is the benefit of an F3? Well, usually when you're running 6S high KV, if you want to call them high KV, anything basically above 1800 KV is considered 6S high KV, you would need a really, really fast CPU. And this is where this ESC comes in because it's rocking the fastest microcontroller unit on an ESC for one of the greatest prices. And when you attach the low ASR capacitor that is provided, you get absolutely no noise, not even a hint of a line in your video feed nor your DVR, which is very good and very uh, huge here, because that's really good for the price that's actually coming at, to be honest. For the flight control, we're using the Hollybird Kakute V1.5. This is their latest here, and um, it just works great, flawless, have no issues to complain whatsoever, and yeah, they just work flawless. I mean, there's nothing to complain. The only issue I have here is the tune, it's not even a big issue, it's a slight issue. And basically, the video footage that you saw, whether it was in the beginning of the video or the end of the video, wasn't even tuned. You were just flying it. You were watching it untuned. And um, yeah, you could still get away with flying these untuned. So that, that just shows you how good of a frame this is. And the overall setup here is really great if you want to replicate it. For the video transmitter, we're using the Rush Tank Mini ultimate vtx it's a beast of a vtx which is this little guy down here however it doesn't come with the uh it doesn't come with the antenna it just comes with the i think this is the one that comes with just the vtx i don't think it even comes with the mmcx i forgot anyways uh make sure you check the specifications i have the link for it down below anyways it's a beast of a vtx all of the rush tank vtx have been proven very great especially in the areas that i fly which are banded buildings with a lot of interference so huge plus now Moving on, I actually got these, I don't know who sent them to me, these are Luminaire antennas, and I used them today, and they were good, but I have nothing to benchmark against them, really. I mean, all I could tell you is if they were shit, I would've just came here and started complaining because I know what my other antennas can do. So overall, it's a good antenna, slightly overpriced, but it's a good antenna. Now, um, the propellers I used, usually I tend to forget to tell you which ones I use. The 5045 or 5047 tri-blades. I'm using the Dalprop 5047Cs with the Popo uh, in the middle part of it where you can actually use a Popo motor because I have a couple of them and they're really nice to have. Um, so these are really great propellers. The reason why I have a ton of them and I really like them is because they were cheap and I could just bend them back and keep flying pretty good. So I really like these propellers, but I will try anything. I'm basically a propeller whore, but this is the one I usually grab and I, f I find to be uh, very good for myself, to be honest. The 5047Cs. And well, the camera, the FXT, the FXT actually looked so familiar. It looked like one of those Fox Sears, to be honest. I forgot which one, but I mean, there's so many goddamn cameras, it's so hard, but it looked like a Fox Sear. It's, it's a hybrid between a Fox Sear and a Cadex in a way. But it overall, it was really good. I didn't have any problems. This is a bit of an expensive camera too, but the latency is very great on it also. And uh, FXT does not usually disappoint, at least so far as far as I've used them. So 
I'm very happy in that perspective. Now, for my HD camera, believe it or not, I'm still using my run cam. And because my GoPro Sessions replacement lenses still haven't arrived, even though I found some. So I'll probably be doing a repair video on the channel once I get that in. But yeah, so far I'm using a run cam. The only issue I'm really starting to hate with it is the audio quality. A couple of people told me to do this mod or something, which I'm going to try out later on. But the audio quality is just terrible compared to a GoPro session, which is kind of a shame. Now, for goggles, I have officially stopped using the Fat Sharks. I've actually stopped for the longest time after my last video of these was the day where I haven't even picked up my Fat Shark and used it. Um, so I've just been using my Sky Zones here. Just the overall convenience and ease of use is really nice. And what you might be like, what the hell does that mean? You have no idea how useful this goddamn button is right here. I mean, this power button. It is <laughs> so useful. Not only that, also I could just plug in any battery, which I really like. On a, on a fast truck, you just have to get two S's. And I never really bought any two S's for it. So I just use the one that it comes with, the 18650s. But here, I just, whatever battery I have left over, I just stick it in and I just start using it. And that just makes it so convenient and just so easy to grab and just use instead of making sure my Fast Shock batteries are charged or not. And um, I really like that. And it just, and obviously it performs really great. And the video quality is 10 times better. So that's why, not 10 times, I'm over exaggerating here, but it is better and it is noticeable. Not slightly, it is noticeably better. And well, everything is linked down below. Check those out. Come join my Patreon because I'll be giving this beast away. So don't miss out. Come join my Patreon and uh, everything's linked down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.